Hello and welcome back to this, the second part of our exploration of the RMS last material in RenderMan Studio, RenderMan from Maya. Okay, as we left things previously, we were getting results which looked somewhat like this. Just pressing render and let's have a look. Yes, image tool is starting up. So I've got a an environment light here which I've actually um, just disabled at the moment, just hidden, just so we can have a look at the, the shadows coming through the glass. Okay, so our glass material has three shadowing modes. This is the most accurate and the most... Um, takes the longest render time. So this is a view-dependent mode. We'll have a look at these settings in a second. Okay, so the view-dependent mode, we're getting quite a nice Fresnel aspect to our um, our shadowing and we're getting light coming through the objects, which we should do, obviously. So with the object selected, let me just make sure I put my it to always on top. Always on top. Um, let's have a look at the material. So under shadows, we have view dependent, which it does say is slow. It's not that slow, it's pretty good. Let's just move back to opaque for a second. And I'm just gonna render this small area here. So in it, I can just select an area here and try re-render. So this is making opaque shadows. Old-fashioned shadow map shadows. Or ray trace shadows, in actual fact, let's be honest. Um, with area light actually giving us the um, expected fall off with sharp shadows close to the object and getting more diffused as it gets further away. Now we can control the darkness of these shadows Shadow darkness, I can make it much lighter. Not actually having a huge effect. 0.3 is what the default is. Okay, so in this case, the shadow darkness not having much of an effect. If we go to the compute, which is medium, and I re-render. So it's computing the shadows but it's not actually giving us the full Fresnel kind of effect to it. So we're getting a bit of fall off the edges. We're definitely seeing where we have multiple objects shadowing, we're getting um, more light being blocked. Now this will actually let me control the shadow darkness. So I push the shadow darkness up high here. That's kind of a bit high. Let's try re-rendering. And we'll see we get extremely dark as a possibility. Or we can control it back down to extremely light shadowing. As you want and as the material actually requires. Okay, so this is quite a bit faster than the view dependent, but doesn't give us the nice um, Fresnel around the outside. Now with the view dependent, with a bit of playing around, the default for it is 0.3, and let's re-render. Okay, you can actually push this up quite high because, in terms of darkness because it is actually taking quite a bit of time to calculate. It's calculating the absorption um, and the Fresnel. So that's kind of light. But yes, we can push this when this finishes. Push that up to say about 0.85 and re-render. And we'll start to see the results around here. Let me just pull up the uh, windows. Raise all so I get my console here. So we'll see the difference. So this was 0.3 and this is 0.84. So you can see we're still getting an, a lot of nice variants of this and the bright areas are still quite bright. So it produces really, really nice results. 
Okay, so that's looking at the shadow parameters in the glass material. The next thing I want to look at, working our way back upwards, that's it. we had a look at um, displacement for some other materials before. Um, these controls here, basically they're going to control a lot of the optimization for um, our material and for the rendering of it. Now the light samples, we need to increase these when we actually have more specular roughness as we saw at the start of the first glass tutorial. Okay. Um, the next thing we're trying to look at actually here is we're going to have a look at the internal reflections. And the object I'm going to focus on for this will be this torus knot because we actually see it most strongly with that. So let's just hide some of these other objects here. And let's just focus on this. Okay, and in our image tool, I'm going to render the whole image. So we'll see what this looks like. Currently, we have the internal reflection limit set to 2, which means that we're actually going to allow internal reflections within this glass until we get to the second reflection, which produces reasonably interesting and accurate results for a lot of purposes. Now, what we also have here is we have the internal reflection scale, which when this finishes in a couple of seconds, um, which is how much that reflection is dimmed on each bounce of the light. Okay, so almost finished. And here we go, I just pause there briefly to cut down on my recording time. Um, so let's just go back here. So scale the contribution of each internal reflection. So this means that each time it bounces internally inside the glass object, it will actually have slightly less energy and eventually will come to a level here. This will be our importance threshold. So when it gets below a 0.3 value, it won't be um, calculated any further. Now, if we want to make this glass slightly more realistic, because a complex object like this will actually probably have some more internal reflections, I'm going to increase my reflection limit here to 5. Now, with that in mind, we may want to just drop our importance threshold here to, say, point, point 0.1. Okay, this is just guessing some of these here now. And I'm going to bring up my random and controls, my window here and under features for my max specular depth. Because I have quite a few um, objects intersecting here, I've got my max spe specular depth set to five at the moment, but with extra bounces, I'm gonna actually push this up to 10, just to make sure that we have sufficient bounces and refractions for specular rays working through the glass to actually do their job and be seen by the camera. Okay, and Again, in the material, the reflection limits 5, the importance threshold is 0.1, and max specular depth, which I've set in the ray tracing here, is 10. And I should just set this to re-render, and we're going to have to pause for a second, because it will take it a while. And we're almost done. I'll just pull up the catalog window here in it, so you can actually see the difference. Now, if we look at the areas around here, we actually have quite a lot of stuff going on and see the difference between lots of bounces and just two bounces. It is actually getting us quite a dramatic difference here, and this is more physically accurate, but at the cost of some rendering speed. Not dramatically different, in actual fact, um, but slightly different. Okay, so we've got to change our um, internal bounces here. What I'm going to do now is just working our way up. We're going to have a look at a few more settings before we call it a day with glass. So as I said, these are some of the things to actually optimize your scene or your material. So the importance threshold is another one which will have um, a dramatic effect on us. If I set this back to 0.3, it means when, when the rays drop down to a level lower than this, they won't actually be calculated. Now, I think most people will understand what um, IOR is. It's the index of refraction. So it's basically the fact that light bends 
when it enters a material from a different medium. So we've got two settings here for index refraction. We've got the index refraction of the actual object and the index refraction of the medium in which the object is. Now this can be very, very useful in instances where I will actually set up a scene sometime in the future, which is, for instance, um, some liquid in a glass and some ice in that liquid. So we'll have various different interfaces between materials. We'll have the air to the glass, the air to the liquid, the liquid to the glass, the ice to the air, and the ice to the liquid. So each of these will need to know the medium in which light is traveling before it enters the material and the index refraction of that material. So I'll set up a scene like that for um, for tutorials in the next couple of days, hopefully, and we'll have a look at how that goes. Now, the next feature we have here is an isotropy, which is basically whether or not um, reflections are coherent or stretched. So an example of an isotropy you'll see in actual fact the most common example which is given is on a CD where the reflections are stretched around the grooves of the CD. And the specular gain has a dramatic impact over the whole rendering of glass in particular. This actually allows us to dim down the amount of specular which we're getting. So on mass, we can actually dim things down. If I drop this down to um, point, point 0.5, now I'll just select a small area here. We'll see it doesn't just dim down the specular reflections here. It's dimming down all the specular contribution. And most of what is actually being rendered is specular with glass. So let's re-render that quickly. It shouldn't take long. So pull my catalog back in here, and we'll see that the difference between these is quite dramatic. So having the gain set up to close to full is useful. Um, one other aspect which I forgot to mention down here is the soft and specular, or sorry, soft and reflected highlights can actually have a useful effect, particularly with strong highlights like this. If I turn this off and I re-render, we should see a slight, slight difference here. Basically, these are unclamped values. So again, if I just grab my catalog, bring it back in here. So the difference between these, oops, between these and actual fact. We're getting slightly less, we have a look particularly in this area here, that setting's the same. It's actually clamping these areas down in the previous one where it has been set. Okay, let me just re-render this with it on, just to show that more clearly. Self-reflected highlights and re-render. Only takes a couple of seconds. So this is the soft reflected highlights on and off. And you can see it's a small feature, but it will actually have an effect on the noisiness of your scene. OK, um, we're going to leave things there for the moment. Hopefully this has been useful to you. So what we've gone through today is we've gone through some of the shadowing parameters, um, gone through the just mentioned the advanced specular and the fact that it's actually used for optimization. And, <clears throat> and we've had a look at the internal reflections. So I'm going to stop now for the moment and come back later with a little bit more on the topic of caustics.